Hello everyone, it's Christopher Naiman. All right, so what are we going to do today? Well, I saw a couple people in the sewing groups um, that found and bought a used Janome MC9000. So that the ones they bought are still working like the one I have here. And they've had some questions about embroidery and all that. So I am going to just give an overview of embroidery on here. And uh, it's just a little bit to help you newbies, not much. I still would suggest that you go to your local sewing machine dealers and uh, a Janome dealer and take some sign up for some lessons. Um, if you bought this from a dealer, they'll give you a free machine operation lessons. So anyway, stay with me. I'm going to do a little embroidery and show you how this machine operates. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Well, I got lucky today. I was in Walmart and they had some cotton fabric by Waverly. This is Waverly. It was $3.88 a yard, something like that. And I got two yards, came to $6.88. So we're going to use this to do my test hoop on the embroidery here. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is thread. Thread is everything. Let me get a couple things going here. Thread is everything for embroidery. Yes, it is, it is, it is, it is. You got to have some decent thread for embroidery. All right, so we're going to start with your bobbin thread, okay? Now for the bobbin thread, you got you need to use a uh, an embroidery bobbin thread. So now like this one here, it's bobbin thread, and this is made by Janome. And then we have the finishing touch bobbin weight thread. Now a good bobbin weight is 60 weight. So listen, I want to tell you something, you newbies. In home sewing, the higher the number, the thinner the thread. So anything below 60, it starts getting thicker. Okay? So when you want bobbin thread, you want at least a 60 weight or higher. You need a thinner thread for your bobbin because of the heavy buildup of the embroidery thread on top. And then there's Madeira, makes a bobbin thread. Okay? So that's that. Now, what you do not use for top thread, you do not use regular construction thread for your top thread. It's too thick. You have to use embroidery thread. And for embroidery thread, you're looking at Madeira. This is a rayon by Madeira. You can use a polyester. Most people like to use polyester embroidery thread because it's stronger and you'll get less breakage. And then they sell these spools of thread. Usually I see these from Europe. Usually see these from Europe. And here's a good trick too, if you want to see how strong your thread is, take it and listen to the snap. Let's see if I can get you to listen to the snap. You ready? If it's got a pretty loud snap, it's going to be a pretty strong thread. So there's that one and that one. And then we have our ultimate favorite here. Here's a Mettler embroidery thread. Um, listen, listen to this one. See, it's got a strong snap to it. That's going to be a strong thread. And then we have my favorite that I always, always have great, great uh, response with is Sulky. Now this is a rayon, so this is softer. I still have great response with this. Um, and if you, if you want though, uh, like I said, polyester. If you're a newbie, go polyester embroidery thread. It's stronger, and you won't get any breaking or anything. Okay. Now, neat, now also going back to the bobbin thread. You can get pre-wound bobbin thread, 60 weight pre-wound. For this machine, it's a class 15, 15J. And see, they come in pre-wounds. So always make sure you're getting the right bobbin for the right machine. When you order these bobbins, make sure you check to make sure your machine is listed on the order. Or just go to your local dealer and they'll sell it to you. All right, and then you have uh, embroidery, bob uh, embroidery needle. You need an embroidery needle. Size 11 to 12 is usually um, the right size to use for this machine. Okay? So, what I'm, and then after this machine has cards that you put in. And I'll show you what I mean. Yes, long time ago, before the internet, you would buy embroidery CDs that each CD had a topic. Like this one had all these designs. Let me see how I can back this up a little further. Back this up a little bit more for you guys. There we go. 
they had more topic embroidery topics like this one had all these fancy designs to this and this was the card that came with each one and this plugs into the side of your machine here and then the designs come up on, on the screen and you choose what design you want and then in the book here in the CD was a booklet is a booklet and this booklet shows you which design is which and it tell, shows you the number of uh, the colors that you need to embroider with and how many there are like this one has nine and it tells you it'll take 32 minutes to embroider that's not including re-threading so add another minute or two to each each thread change okay so that was one design here and you can still find these 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 uh, cards you can find them on eBay your local sewing machine dealer will have them this one's pretty this was uh, floral and quilt designs this one here was a memory card um, that was just plain some of these designs like this was made for Elna and the Elna machines were made by Janome so this works in the Janome see Janome made their Janome machine then they made the Elna which was a duplicate of this and I think over in Europe they had another brand that they put this machine name under it's hard to keep up then they had this where they had an attachment that you could buy where you put yarn on and it's a wheel that you put on here and it wheels out so you would have like these big letters like the sweaters for the football cheerleader or whatever those sweaters what they call them with the letters on them I call them the happy days sweaters that had the big letter on there so this was and you use yarn and what it does is the yarn with an invisible thread and yarn and the top stitch is the yarn down as it's embroidering and creates this nice felted raised look pretty cool right and then there was angels like these are just a few that I have that I acquired see this one was $49.95 that's how much they used to cost back then these were all the designs in it now this one has these as time progressed with machines the embroidery designs got better and better and they got more intricate prettier this one was on um, musical instruments and there's so many more CDs out there so many more and then this one here which we're going to be doing today this is um, amazing designs CD uh, I'm sorry CD case but it's a card for Nancy Zeman and this is lace so I'm not going to stand here and change thread through this whole video so I'm just going to do one color and we use the sulky and a tan color and um, yeah so that's what we're going to do today all right so let's hoop, let's hoop up the fabric all right kids so now this came with this hoop and it came with this hoop so you had a rectangle hoop Had a rectangle hoop with a screw to tighten and then you had a spring action circle hoop and then they had this hoop which you can move in position and you would use templates and you could get like a different placement bigger placement I call this you know, I call this a prehistoric uh, embroidery. This was a second generation for them. And a lot has really improved since then. But if this is a machine that you can only find during this pandemic for sewing, I'm going to tell you something. It's a nice machine and what little you can do can be a lot. Okay? So what you would do is you would hook your, like this bigger one would go here, a smaller one you can use for that. It hooks onto this tray. This was a tray. Um, cloth setter. They call this a cloth setter. Now, I never found anything really... If you look here, see, that's not even centered. I, you can move this around, but for some reason, Janome, their designs were never really centered. Let me try the other hoop and see if that's centered. Same thing. And this doesn't move any further the other way. I can't move this the other way. So, 
And when I put my templates in before on Janome, it, it never centered well for some reason. I don't know. I never really got into the embroidery on this machine because I did more with my baby lock and my brother embroidery, which by the time I started doing this stuff was so far advanced. I mean, I got my embroidery machines like in 2006. And you can remember this machine came out in 2007. Um, no, I take that back. My first embroidery machine was a brother made for, for Bernina called a Deco 500. And everything you lined up evenly and then you did a trace. So this, this one here, I never really played much with it. I just use it, type, to be honest with you, I just use it to hold the hoop in place while I'm, while, I'm, while I'm hooping. So I just put it there. And normally I have a, a kitchen drawer liner on here so it doesn't move on me. So I just put it, my stabilizer and my fabric. This is just a test. This is all I'm doing is just a test. And then you take my hoop, take the hoop, and load up. If I can get it in there. Come on, there we go. Make sure it's in there nice and snug. Okay. Now, we'll take this to the machine and embroider out a design. So, let's see if you, yeah, it should be nice and snug. You don't want, you don't want this to be loose. It's got to be nice and snug in there. And the more you practice lining everything up, the better you'll get at it. Like I said, this machine, I didn't buy this machine for the embroidery. I bought it for sewing because it's a very good sewing machine. And like I said, by the time I bought this machine, um, all my other machines were, I had advanced and I got more advanced embroidery machines by Brother and Baby Lock, so I didn't use much of the Janome, but Janome makes a good stitch. They really do make a good stitch, and let's go and I'll show you. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the machine is shut off. Then you take your memory card, put the memory card in the machine, and then you turn it on. And let's go to the machine now. Okay, now I'm going to hit Menu. And I'm going to hit embroidery card. And there's all the designs that come up. Now I'm going to take out my folder and look at my folder here and say, what design do I want to embroider? I think today we're going to do, let me look here. Hmm. Which one do I want to do? Let's do number 16. Where's that? 16. I'm going to do number 16. So there's 16 right there. Okay? Now, you want to make sure that you put your embroidery foot on. Here we go. Okay, so this is the embroidery foot that came with this machine. There's the arm that extends out. So make sure nothing is, nothing is obstructing behind the machine and on the side. So then with your presser foot up, with your presser foot up, you take your hoop, put your hoop underneath the foot there, and then you connect it to the back. I'm going to go to the back and show you. Okay, so there's where you connect it, and you just twist it. That's it. And here's a beautiful, sulky thread we're going to be using. This is, this is embroidery thread. You've got to make sure you use embroidery thread. Okay, now, one thing that by the time Janome introduced this machine, this was their second generation of embroidery machines. By the time they introduced it, Brother was already out there. And Brother machines, when you forget to put the presser foot down, it will beep. It'll make a beep. This machine doesn't. So you always, always have to remember to put your foot down when you start sewing. That's true with um, you know, embroidery or sewing. That's why I always suggest everyone, like this machine has a knee lifter. And I would always suggest use the knee lifter See that? When you sew and when you embroider, so you don't forget to put the foot down, right? Okay, oh, one more thing I forgot to show you, hold on. Okay, this machine has a presser foot dial and you wanna turn it down to, a, to one when you do embroidery, okay? Turn it down to a one. So, this tells you what color you're on. It's only one color, so the color is already there. 
but it doesn't have, it tells you what foot to use, which is P. Uh, you can override the tension, which I never do. And this here allows you to move the design wherever you want it to move on, on, your, on your hoop. Okay? But you can't do a trace. And then it allows you to see in, in, in the grid. But there's no way you can trace it in the hoop like the modern ones do. And that was something that Brother brought out, even though Janome waited forever to come out with their second generation machine, which was this one. Um, so your new modern machines have a trace feature on all brand machines now, have a trace feature so you can trace the design out. But what they would use back then, which I don't have for these cards, is they would come with templates. And you would use a template. All right, so here's what you do. Your foot is down. You hit the start button. Oh, make sure your foot pedal is um, also unplugged. Now, I noticed on the Janome machine, when your foot is down, you can still pull the thread easily. With modern machines, when your foot is down, it engages the tension so you can't pull the thread. Because I kept thinking, in the beginning, I kept screwing this up. I kept thinking I was screwing this up and it wasn't in my tension assembly properly. But once the machine starts, then the tension engages. So don't be, a, don't, don't uh, frat on that. And the tension is on auto, so you're gonna start. You're gonna take a couple stitches. Now also, when you hit the embroidery mode and your back arm moves into position, it automatically lowers the feed dogs for you too, okay? All right, so let me just, there we go. Make sure it's all, you got little lines there where to line that up. And we're just gonna let this go. I'm gonna let you watch it sew out. And I'll probably do a little fast forward so you don't watch the whole thing. Here we go. Oh, the other thing I want you to notice is this one does a lot of bouncing around the way Janome had this designed. Whereas your new machines, um, like the Brother, Baby Lock, and all the other brands, they have an arm on the side and it's more of a rectangle frame and it doesn't have that bounce like this one does so but remember this is from 1995 or early, a couple years earlier when they made this so they were still trying to uh, progress and refine their home embroider machines but uh, look how long this machine has lasted so there's very good very good machine just a few things that need to be tweaked whatever but Look how long this has lasted. So if you got this machine today, this year, and know that you're gonna get some good sewing out of this. All right, here we go. Okay, so I want to show you something while this is almost done. Although there was no thread breaking while I did this, I do want to show you something on the screen here. And on the screen, what it shows is... Let me get this camera up for you here. Alright, so right here, um, we've got, if the thread breaks, you do this and you can move the needle position either frame advance, frame return. Like if I hit this, it'll move 
a few times. Let me get this off the tripod here and I'll show you. So if, for instance, if your thread breaks and you've got to re-thread and you want to go back, you hit that a couple times and it'll go back. The same with it about going forward. And once we're done with that, then we just do this and we'll hit it again to finish now. Okay, so it is done. It is done. Let me take this out to show you. Hoop it there. Lift with my knee lifter. Pull it out. Cut the thread. And voila. Isn't that a beautiful? Now, this design is this whole this whole uh, card is called lace. And the way that you sew free uh, the lace really is you have the back stabilizer should be the clear water soluble stabilizer and then you have a layer of organza and then you have water soluble stabilizer on the top and then after it's done you would dip it in water and it would dissolve all the interface all the interface the um, stabilizer and then you would carefully trim around the organ excess organza away and in here and you've got a beautiful uh, freestanding lace. Isn't that beautiful? I thought that was really gorgeous. Very good. Alright, so maybe I'll continue some more examples on this machine for you all. If you like this, let me know. If I don't see many replies, I'm not even going to bother. But I hope this helped you if you got this machine. And um, once again, congratulations on sewing and coming into sewing. And it's never too late to learn. It's never too early to learn. And remember, some of these older machines are still running good. So if you cannot afford a top-of-the-line sewing machine today, you surely can get a former top-of-the-line sewing machine that's still running. Visit your local sewing machine dealer because they go through, the, they go through these old machines with a tooth and nail fine tooth comb, nail, magnifying glass, whatever you want to call it, and they check these machines before they sell them. And they usually give you a 30, 60, maybe even a 90 day guarantee. And most of these machines that they sell used, they will give you a free machine operation lesson. One thing that I noticed on the sewing groups for beginners, y'all are not getting any lessons buying online. And then you're writing on these groups and you're paranoid and you're frustrated and you're trying to get some help and you're blaming the machine and it's not the machine and you're not reading your instruction manual. So, you know, th that's the best advice I can give you. Find someone who knows how to use a sewing machine and sit down with them. Buy the machine from your local dealer and go in for that machine operation lesson. And then check their class schedules and see if they offer advanced sewing or inter intermediate sewing, beginner sewing classes. And sign up and pay for them and take them. It's to your advantage. Alright guys, take care. I hope you enjoyed this. And this was that card by Nancy Zeman on Amazing Designs. And like I said, you can find these cards um, at your local sewing machine dealers or online on eBay. There's tons of them on eBay. I found a lot of them. Just Google. Google, guys. Google is your best friend. Ask Google anything. You'll find that information a lot faster than waiting for a bunch of people to respond to your question on Facebook with a million different responses and only probably 0.5% is the correct answer for you. So you'll find a better answer when you research on your own. Take care, everybody. Love you. Bye now.